Well, it has been a while since we have talked about fluorescence, fluorescent minerals, phosphorescence, those things. I did this video right here two years ago, almost um, two years ago right now. Um, and at that time I had uh, just gotten my very first proper 365 nanometer filtered long wave light. Um, and at that time I had only been able to compare it to this guy, which is a little uh, 395 nanometer uh, cheapo. So this, this uh, UV beast here was a big improvement over this guy. Well now, now I got a short wave light, so we're talking about short wave lights today. And uh, as a little bit of a refresher for those of you that didn't see that video, the basics of it, um, now it does get a little more complex than that, than this, but uh, the basics of it would be you shine a UV light on a rock that is fluorescent. Uh, the UV, the ultraviolet light, which is outside of our normal visible spectrum, will excite an electron and it jumps orbit. And when it jumps that orbit, a visible light spectrum is now able to be reflected back into your eye. So you see interesting colors where otherwise under just this natural light, you wouldn't be able to. Phosphorescence is when those electrons take a little bit to uh, drop back down to their normal orbit and they're no longer reflecting that light back into your eye, so you see this residual glow, okay? That's the basics of these things. Now, with UV lights, we have long wave, short wave, and mid wave. I guess I should have said long, mid, short. <laughs> um, these little uh, cheap 395s that are uh, very close to the visible spectrum really produce a lot of purple light. We are not really talking about these guys today, and uh, really, we're not talking about this uh, long wave, because we've, we've discussed long wave here, and you can go watch that video. But no, rather we are talking about uh, this, these uh, 255 nanometer shortwave lights. I believe in my old video, I was like, well, shortwave lights, they're expensive. <sighs> they're, they've came down in size and in price a lot in the past two years. Uh, this light was purchased for me by a very generous viewer here of the channel. So uh, if, if it sucks, I can say that it sucks, right? I don't, it, I don't think it sucks. Um, but that's the basics of it. Uh, yeah, so people are going to ask. This light right here is 140 bucks. However, there are other manufacturers that are selling short waves and mid waves for about 100 bucks and some for well more than uh 140 bucks so we're kind of in the, i feel like we're in the middle ish price range um which that's good and uh that said um these are filtered you can kind of see right there it's like looking into a black mirror <laughs> um as opposed to this one like you can clearly see leds so these are filtered we're not going to be really getting into the, some of the technical specs here because there's all kinds of devices that you can measure uh how much light is being pass through filters and these filters that we have on on these lights over time over exposure to the uv do kind of break down and eventually more visible light is passed through the filter we're not testing that either we're purely going to be uh doing some not very scientific tests where we uh test this guy out at a little bit of a distance that is reasonable and uh we'll talk a little bit uh, about that test here shortly i do want to uh real quickly go into safety sally mode here and uh talk about these guys here because uh i didn't really I, I haven't been able to find a lot of info about this i found some online but the basics of it would be the ocular fluid in your eyes is mildly uv reactive so if you don't wear glasses that can filter out that ultraviolet light when you shine it at something and it bounces back uh it kind of like hurts your eyes it hurts your eyes so i'm gonna be uh I'm going to be looking like a total dweeb for the rest of this presentation. This is kind of an interesting little product. It is a, uh, well, it's a UV test card. So I can take my long wave light and aim it at this and it will turn pink. And I can take my short wave light and aim it at it and it will, it will test, it will test a uh, green. So even with some of the lights on in here, we can uh, do this quite easily.
you can very easily see that it's bouncing back as pink and we can do that right there. We can also switch over to the short wave and as we move it in, it will turn green. You can see that green light right there. You can see up there at the top a little UVC. One thing that's interesting is we can actually test these glasses, right? By, uh, well, we'll just kind of do this. Look at that. So it's filtering out the UV, which makes it uh, safe for my eyeballs. I mean, I'm shining it right through. I have I basically have the light right up here above it. So yeah, these work. So you're looking at two rocks on my shop floor. Forgive uh, the dirty floor. The one on the left is a Uperlite, and the one on the right is Norbergite. So we will shut off the lights. You are approximately, well, the camera is approximately six feet away, and uh, we will test the one on the right with the short wave, and we'll test the one on the left with uh, the long wave. I mean, I can very easily see it. Now, we do have a somewhat wide angle lens on the camera, so we will probably push that in here. Uh, so that's the short and that's the, the long. Uh, so you can clearly see the difference uh, that that Uper light is glowing quite, uh, quite strong. And then we get no reaction out of there, but we have a large amount of bleed over into the visible spectrum with uh, this 365. Once again, short wave. Yeah, this is what we don't want. I'm going to move you in. You are a little bit closer now. And there is that Uper light. And Norbergite. I'm pretty happy with the amount of throw that you get out of this. I can clearly see that fluorescence taking place you know, eight feet away, which for a little light that is uh, running off of a single 18650 with uh, the, the single LED, I think that is great. Uh, very happy with that. I do have over here on the bench a whole bunch of specimens that look really, really good under the short wave. So we're going to look at those here shortly and maybe we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk, you know, what, we're going to talk about some of the photography aspects of this because Really, the way you want to do this is you want to take photos. The video cannot replicate what my eye sees, so uh, photos are going to be the best way to do that. And I will be showing you my technique for taking these photos. Um, and uh, maybe you can, you can do, do that yourself with your uh, short wave, your long wave, whatever. Right here are a number of specimens that look very good under short wave light. I think this is a good example of how the photos and video can look dramatically different. And uh, the big part of that is, you know, video needs to be captured at, you know, 30 frames per second. And uh, there's a lot of compensating that happens even with a camera such as this that I can run in full manual mode or, you know, whatever kind of mode I want if I want to do aperture priority or whatever. Um, it does not capture enough light quickly enough to really do it justice. So real quick, we're going to uh, run through some of these. We have Norbergite, we've got a calcite core drill, Willemite and calcite slabs and solid pieces. The, uh, yeah, yeah. So we got a lot of cool stuff here. We've got a lot of cool stuff. We've got even more cool stuff over there. Let's check this out. So clearly, these can look very, very, very cool under UV light. I mean, this core drill back here is awesome looking.
I have a whole assortment of little specimens here. I know being in the white case kind of uh, throws off some of that color, but very cool. So this is how we're going to do this. Uh, we want to do a longer exposure. Um, and the camera that you're watching right now, I can take photos and do, a, as a max, a quarter second exposure. Um, however, with my phone, which is a Samsung Galaxy 14, <laughs> I think, um, I can go much, much longer. And when I flip my camera over into pro mode, we can adjust our manual focus. We want to get away from auto focusing. We want to go manual focus. We want to go low ISO uh, and a longer shutter speed. And then we will turn the lights off and we will paint the specimen with light as, uh, as it does that. I will also have my, uh, my timer on and uh, we will hit the lights. The timer is set for two seconds so that I can hit the shutter button. It will time down and any vibration from my hands will have uh, gone away by then. And there we go, let's start painting. And let's look at that photo. That's okay-ish, I would say. Let's get the camera over just a little. We might adjust our focus. That'll be a little bit better. And we might also do eight seconds. We'll try eight seconds. That's a much better photo. I think that's good enough to where I can uh, take that into uh, photo editing and we can kind of sharpen it. We can do some little tweaks to it, but uh, that's, a pretty, that's pretty good. Maybe we'll do one more and we will adjust our ISO just a little bit. We'll turn that down and see how that looks. Take another photo. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's take a, I'm going to take a couple of more photos and uh, we can look at these together. I think these photos came out looking pretty good. I'm very happy with how they turned out. And it's nice that you can take photos like this simply with a UV light and a somewhat new-ish cell phone. And I kind of also like that a lot of these rocks that we will collect or, you know, or, or buy that are very phosphorescent and fluorescent are kind of ugly, ugly rocks. So like they're not exact, particularly uh, beautiful rocks. However, uh, I will add that a lot of thunder eggs look really cool under the shortwave light. At some point I'll have to do a big comparison. Um, but it's a nice, interesting aspect of collecting rocks that doesn't involve a whole bunch of very expensive lapidary machines. And uh, yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy with this little guy. Time for me to go find a mid-wave light uh, next. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. Um, yeah, fluorescent rocks. All right, y'all take care and I will catch you in the next video.